Toongrin. Welcome to another Top 10 video, folks. And seeing as I've reviewed every single Scooby-Doo movie from our series Scooby-Dooby-Doo Corner, and with more movies on the way into theaters and on DVD, it's time for Scooby-Doo Crazy Wild Boy to give his Top 10 Best Scooby-Doo Movies. All of these are just my personal face based on animation, writing, and their stance on the spectrum of that status quo for Scooby-Doo. But no matter what's on the list, it shouldn't dictate what you personally find good or bad. So don't be too upset if your fave doesn't make the cut. You ready? Let's do this. This is the Top 10 Best Scooby-Doo Movies. Number 10. Scooby-Doo and Kiss Rock and Roll Mystery Yes, this movie exists, a movie where the Scooby Dang teams up with the rock band Kiss. But not only are they rock gods in the eyes of the Scooby Gang, but they are in fact literal rock gods from another dimension who solve crimes and have Dragon Ball Z powers. Rock and Roll Mystery is just a ball of super silly exploitation, existing to make Kiss relevant again, but we have the two teens cross over to make one big wacky adventure. Even though the movie does have setbacks like Kiss being so awesome that it overshadows Mystery Inc. entirely, and the ending of the mystery being a complete load of butt as it pathetically tries for the was it real ending but it fails spectacularly, it, it made no sense! But even with these failings, these help make Rock and Roll Mystery stand out and kind of endearing like a dopey looking puppy. And it also helps that the movie has its rocking kiss music, extravagant visuals, and draw dropping fight scenes. Not to mention, it's one of the few screen movies to have an actual supernatural mystery to it. So come on, look in its eyes, and you'll see why this dopey fun movie makes it to number 10. I don't know. Maybe I can find friends with normal interests. Be careful with that base. Because it's made from alien technology? Because it costs more than your house. Number 9. Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery See, when your company is run by a feeble racist old man so out of touch with reality that he causes sales to plummet, it's only sensible you go to a kid's cartoon about a talking dog and a stoner to bail your butt out. So more blatant whoring out for relevance. WrestleMania Mystery is again more Scooby-Doo silliness pushed to the slightly more realistic ring of insanity as the game is roped into an adventure that's written like the most ego-stroking WWE event ever, which given the cook that runs the place makes perfect sense. But unlike KISS where the exposure was off-centered and overshadowing, this is a crossover where the gang and the wrestlers are on an equal playing field of humor and character. The WWE wrestlers even display much bigger quirks to stand out and make the adventure more fun. The quirkiest of the wrestlers are The Miz for being the movie's total bitch boy as he gets the crap beat out of him. Oh, and John Cena who does this. Is there anything left to say after epicness like that? Nothing else but this goofy crossover definitely deserves number 9. Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders Now we're onto the fan favorite MOOC animation movies, and also the weakest of the four. Yes, I know that's already given everyone permission to come and burn down my house, but just hold up a second. What was really good about Alien Invaders? The animation being superb is a no-brainer, but what Alien Invaders has is a heartwarming love subplot. Defend Fred and Daphne's relationship all you want, they've always had the chemistry of styrofoam. Shake and Crystal, on the other hand, actually show a level of romance that was both amusing and heartwarming. A fellow Scooby-Doo reviewer, that long-haired creepy guy, put it best when we discussed Crystal over Skype, and he said Crystal was the only secondary character you could see being an actual part of the game. And I couldn't agree with him more. Crystal is a fantastic character and a fantastic love interest. So it's a heartwarming romantic Scooby-Doo. Too bad the very by the books mystery holds it back a tad. But hey, if a Scooby-Doo movie can make you emotional, then it surely should get the number 8 spot. <laughs> number 7. 
number 7. Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost Now we're onto the third best move movie, and with a much more rustic color palette and lighting, Witch's Ghost is the true high production quality back to basics movie for Scooby-Doo. But being back to basics fair is what held the Alien Invaders back I hear you say. What makes this stand out more as the preferred movie? Two things for me this time, The Hex Girls and Tim Curry. The Hex Girls since their debut in this movie have made several appearances throughout the Scooby-Doo franchise. And why is that? Well, their musical numbers had flashed their rhythm, the colors were bright and contrasting, and it was like an animated music video, with Scooby-Doo slapped in there. But Tim Curry as Ben Ravencroft stole the show, and opened up the tensest climax in any Scooby-Doo movie. Plus, isn't the witch's defeat? It gives me shivers. That's a pretty cold death for a Scooby-Doo movie. Hell, oh, that's on par for Disney villain deaths. So, for awesome music, new characters that have become a staple of the franchise, and the courage for an epic villain death, The Witch's Ghost wins it at number 7. Scooby-Dooby-Doo! Number 6 Scooby-Doo and the Samurai Sword This ain't gonna get me many points in the Scooby-Doo community. Yes, I have one of the What's New Scooby-Doo movies in the top 10. The series of movies more known for their appalling styrofoam blandness. The Abysmally Doll Where's My Mummy came out of this series of movies. But I'm not one to just write them all off as bland and move on with my day. I strive for the positives and Samurai Sword surprised me by being the movie to step up the most out of the Scooby-Doo comfort zone. Focusing much less on the Scooby-Doo mystery, and making it a Scooby-Doo Indiana Jones cross with Naruto adventure, which really worked in favor for the movie to make it stand out. The gang going on this road trip treasure hunt allowed for a lot more interesting locales to be seen, and some cool mythology to be told, which is great for all us fans who love real monsters in the Scooby-Doo movies. But what really made me love this movie was its fight scenes. For Scooby-Doo animation, these are some well choreographed and impactful action scenes, something that only the top tier Scooby-Doo movies have ever been able to pull off. Although Samurai Sword doesn't have the most stimulating narrative of the movies, I can forgive that thanks to its brave steps away from the status quo, earning its number 6 spot. Number 5. Scooby-Doo Abracadabra Doo. This is simply put the quintessential status quo directed DVD Scooby-Doo movie. Now, throughout this list, I have stated that I admire any of the Scooby-Doo movies for taking steps away from the Monster of the Week man in suit mystery that Scooby-Doo is famous for. I praise experimentation and brave mature writing, but experimentation can only go so far when we talk about a franchise as expansive as Scooby-Doo. So I should state what I consider to be the bare minimum quality a Scooby-Doo project should achieve to be, and that minimum is Abracadabra Doo. An interesting setting, a threatening monster, quirky gang antics, good colorful suspects all with good motives, and a mystery that is actually fun to unravel. At the heart of Scooby-Doo, there was always a fun simple mystery. Abracadabra Doo just showed that you can take that simple mystery solving and expand into a fun movie length special. That's why this gets the number 5 spot for showing the bare minimum Scooby-Doo should be to be mysterious, goofy fun. scooby abba dabba -do. Number 4 Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase Scooby-Doo entering video games. For a catch potato kid like I was, that was like a match made in heaven. This is another one of the Mook animation movies, and it stands out in the floor by first being the movie with the brightest coloring, and that coloring really fits. We're not trying to have a romantic feeling or a welcome the dog return of a witch. This is a fun video game movie with Scooby and the game trying to escape. This is arguably the movie that will get me labeled as having rose tinted glasses, because writing wise, the mystery is very boring and predictable, especially how it beats you over the head with the answer. Baseball. Baseball. Baseball! 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 Do you get it? 
it, the tip is baseball. I'll concede the movie isn't as good or refined as the other choices on this list. However, I will make the argument that in terms of the MOOC movies, Cyber Chase is far more consistent with its writing. Alien Invaders hit an emotional core with me, but its mystery was duller by comparison, and Witch's Ghost has its rockin' music and fantastic climax, but the rest of the movie is very middle of the road in terms of writing. Cyber Chase doesn't have that issue. It knows what it wants to be, a fun, simple mystery, and although the mystery is very blunt, I can't deny the true sense of fun the whole movie exudes. Plus, it does the whole crossover of past monsters infinitely better than Monsters Unleashed. Take this, daddy mm. It's a real gas! <laughs> These theatrical scooby writers just gotta stop ripping off the director of video movies. They do it a lot better than you. So for being just a stand-up simple and fun MOOC movie, Cyber Chase makes its way to my number 4 spot. Why, Scooby? Number 3 Scooby-Doo Moon Monster Madness Usually the shark jumped up putting your series in space as the final nail in the coffin, like poor Jason Voorhees. But Moon Monster Man doesn't show signs of this series finally gasping its last breath of creativity, but final pushes to up in the ante on production. Moon Monster Man is a cinematic Scooby Doo movie, with set designs I would say almost ripped off from Bioshock. This really gives the movie a much more bigger and more epic tone to its atmosphere. The running of the side characters slash suspects gives each character more distinct levels to them, other than opting for simple archetypes like in the past. This allows for a variety of different interactions with them and the gang to flesh out the cast. The psychics were so good in fact, the gang again was outshined with them, even saddled with either playing sidekick of the sidekickers or a petty jealousy arc. However, that jealousy arc shined light on a new, more human side of Velma and Daphne in a way we haven't seen before, and Aglaise's characters shined even more during the climax, even though they were playing sidekick, because they played off their character flaws with the great supporting cast. Moon Monster Madness in the next two movies on this list should be what we hold as the top tier standard for Scooby-Doo movies in terms of quality, fantastic animation, intelligent writing, and excellent world building. Not to mention the villain in this picture straight up tried to murder everyone. <laughs> Would have? Oh, I'm getting away with it. And just to be certain you never leave, I've planted thermal charges like this one throughout the complex. How many can there be? Holy crap, we need more Scooby-Doo antagonists being psychotic like this. This movie deserves the number three spot. Number 2 Scooby-Doo Camp Scare There's always been one thing that is missing from most of the director's video Scooby-Doo movies. A sense of actual peril and danger for the characters. Sure, we know because it's a Scooby-Doo kids movie, they're not gonna get killed or anything. But in the worst Scooby-Doo movies that weren't comedy-centric, there was just no sense of threat that mixed the mystery to fully intrigue and immerse yourself. It's like we were back in the 70s age, where they just ran around from people in costumes and you asked, Are you really in danger? Really? Now, let me just jump in right here and say, yes, Scooby-Doo is a comedy franchise, no mistaking that. But I think most of us can agree that we'd rather Scooby-Doo facing off with more Charlie the Robots and not ghostly Abraham Lincolns. The monsters need to be a bit creepier, threatening, and imposing since this will make them more memorable and thus leave a bigger impact on the narrative as an antagonist. Camp Scare does this with great success. Thanks to its inspiration from Friday the 13th, the movie is allowed to be a lot more frightening with its monster designs and is allowed to set up scenes that put the game in far more peril than usual. How many times did the woodsmen swing that real axe around near their heads? <laughs> Along with that 
level of suspense. The mystery is good and the side characters, Luke, Trudy, Jessica, and Deacon, help flesh out the game's personalities. Luke and Jessica helping Fred question his own skills to inspire others, Trudy acting as an introverted mirror of Velma, letting her become a role model for Trudy, and Deacon being dorky to offset Scooby and Shaggy's goofiness. I'm placing Camp Scare at number 2, not because it's the most revolutionary Scooby-Doo movie out there, but Camp Scare truly has captured the heart of the Scooby-Doo mystery. The gang is fun and quirky, the sidekicks support the main characters' story arcs, and the monsters are threatening. This is just a no-brainer, Scooby-Doo Camp Scare gets the number 2 spot. And the number one Scooby-Doo movie is... Say it with me now, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Yes, yes, totally creative choice, I know. Zombie Island is the Scooby-Doo movie that a majority of fans say is among their faves, and why wouldn't it? This movie was a real turnaround for the franchise. It has everything that makes it classic Scooby-Doo and up the ante in what hardcore Scooby-Doo fans love. A real fear factor, suspense, mystery, and real monsters. With cat demons and a dark history of treachery and murder, Zombie Island is hands down the darkest that Scooby-Doo has ever gotten in the movies. We wouldn't get another Scooby-Doo project in terms of this level of maturity for 12 years with Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. Zombie Island was just refreshing, but sure, there are Scooby-Doo movies with real monsters like Boo Brothers, School School, and Reluctant Werewolf, but Zombie Island was the one that finally stepped out of that safe kid-friendly box by showing imagery that might scare kids. This is the stuff that gets kids thinking, challenges them to come to terms with being scared, and there is nothing wrong with that. Some kids like to be scared while also knowing they are safe and with an anime movie, you can do that perfectly. Now I'm not saying that Zombie Island is this great psychology tool for kids, it's still at heart a Scooby-Doo movie, but its maturity on its subject matters, its dark imagery and the fact that it took the characters and gave them real lives outside of the mysteries, with Daphne and Fred as a reporting duel, Velma a bookstore owner, and Shaggy and Scooby as drug trackers in airports. Okay. Point is, Zombie Island does drama well, does comedy well, and some of the best music that has become iconic with the new age Scooby-Doo fans. I would dare say Zombie Island is what gave new life into the franchise to keep it around to this day. This movie has spectacular animation, a surprisingly mature story that gave the characters more roots to grow and not just be the tropes of the leader, the damsel, the smart one, and the comic relief. Simply put, Scooby-Doo Zombie Island is my personal choice for the best Scooby-Doo movie. And that was my top 10 list of best Scooby-Doo movies. Now to count this, I will be of course making a top 10 worst Scooby-Doo movies list. Gotta balance it out after all. If you're interested in more in-depth thoughts on each of the movies I listed, check out the Scooby-Doo-Doo Corner Playlist. Like I said, I reviewed all of the Scooby-Doo movies. Please feel free to comment on what your favorite Scooby-Doo movies are. Do you like them when they experiment more with the formula? Or do you prefer the classic Scooby-Doo mysteries? And if you want to keep up to date with what Toon Grin does next, then please be sure to share the video, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel. And me and Nero will see you next time for another Top 10. Have a good day, folks.